In the midst of extreme hardship, a desperate decision changes the course of history. On March 19, 1931, Nevada legalizes gambling. The U.S. acquires Nevada in 1848 in the Mexican-American War. In 1859, the famed Comstock load of gold and silver deposits brings settlers to the territory. During the Civil War in 1864, Nevada becomes the 36th U.S. state. But by 1924, Nevada's mines are in decline. Then the Great Depression hits in 1929, crushing the state's already fragile economy. In a desperate attempt to turn things around, the Nevada legislature legalizes gambling. No one could have predicted the long-term impact this measure would have on the state. Las Vegas grows from just 5,000 people in 1931 to a metro area of more than 2 million today. The city has become the world's gambling capital and an entertainment mecca. Today, state gambling taxes make up 18% of Nevada's overall tax revenue, trailing only sales taxes at 29%. Stay tuned. We'll learn about two other 1931 events that transform the state of Nevada. We'll also learn about three developments that shaped Las Vegas 10 years later in 1941. And finally, I'll reminisce about Las Vegas when I was a kid and tell you about, uh, tell you about my most recent visit to the city. And don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. There's a link in the description. So in 1931, the same year that gambling is legalized, there are these two other major events that happen in Nevada. First, the state changes its divorce laws, requiring just six weeks of residency to file for divorce. This helps solidify Reno's position as the divorce capital of the world. People travel to the city from far and wide. Reno entrepreneurs wisely provide accommodations and other amenities, including legalized gambling for the visitors who cannot leave the state during the six weeks. In 1942, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that other states must recognize Nevada's divorces, citing the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution. The other major 1931 event is that construction begins on the Hoover Dam. This influx of workers and capital helps Las Vegas do better economically than many other communities across the country during the Great Depression. But it's still just a small town of about 5,000 residents and the banks that have not failed are not exactly doling out loans to build casinos. Nonetheless, it still helps Southern Nevada survive the depression in the short term and provides water and electricity that become fundamental to the growth of the city. For the first 10 years or so after gambling is legalized, the impact on Las Vegas is minimal. Now this really begins to change because of three important developments in 1941. First, as World War II rages in Europe, the U.S. Army Air Corps constructs an airfield with an aerial gunnery school northeast of Las Vegas. The desert location is ideal for year-round training and is far enough inland to reduce the likelihood of an enemy attack. By July 1941, five months before the attack on Pearl Harbor, 800 enlisted men are stationed there at this airfield. In 1942, the airfield graduates over 9,000 gunners. The impact on Las Vegas' economy is massive. The airfield is today known as Nellis Air Force Base. The second 1941 development is the construction of a magnesium plant southeast of Las Vegas. By 1942, the plant has 13,000 workers and becomes the foundation for the city of Henderson. The third 1941 development that transforms Las Vegas is the opening of the city's first hotel casino on what we now know as the Las Vegas Strip. It's called the El Rancho Las Vegas. This western themed resort features 50 rooms, restaurants, a theater, a casino, and a swimming pool. Now, I grew up in Utah, and my family drove through Las Vegas many times when I was a kid in the 1980s to visit family and Mickey Mouse in Southern California. We would always plan to stop in Vegas to eat because its expansive, yet still inexpensive, buffets were great. Uh, we also frequently stayed overnight because hotel rooms were so cheap. 
Now, nothing seems inexpensive in Las Vegas. Now, I'm not a gambler, so Vegas doesn't appeal to me the way it does to many other people. My most recent trip there was actually to see you 2 at the Sphere in October 2023. That was amazing. Incredible venue, and U2 is U2. Uh, I have effectively indoctrinated my children when it comes to music, so they all love the Irish band. Three of my four kids, in fact, all of whom are adults now, were able to join me, and we had an absolute blast. Now, if you like what you've seen here, please like and subscribe. You can also watch another amazing Mr. Lewis video right here. And there's another one right here. Thanks for watching.